the Gateway Station was a large geosynchronous space station orbiting Earth in the Sol system. Partially owned and operated by the ICC, Gateway Station functioned as just that, a gateway between Earth and the rest of the solar system and the Great Middle Heavens region. So, in today's data log I want to explore this very important centre of travel and commerce. Gateway Station was constructed in the year 2130 in order to act as a centre of commerce, trade, travel and transportation between Earth and the other solar and extrasolar human colonies and locations. Built almost entirely from advanced polymers, Gateway would fall under the control of the Interstellar Commerce Commission known simply as the ICC. The ICC being responsible for conducting, monitoring and regulating trade operations to and from Earth. The ICC were based on Gateway but maintained their main base of operation on the Ruby Colony and Star System Koi 812.03. They would enforce and require all crews and vessels to hold an ICC license to operate legally. There is several obvious reasons for this, of which include the regulation and halting of illicit or illegal substances and goods, and also help enforce quarantine procedures into and out of Earth. Above just the ICC though, several Earth-based governments held offices or presences on the station as well as the various megacorporations, and even the colonial marshals, the extrasolar colonization administration and at times the USCMCs. The USASF or the United States Aerospace Force maintained an aerospace school tasked with training successive generations of USASF officers. The Gateway Station possessed a large amount of offices for various uses by its number of different inhabitants. Interior spaces are heavily optimised with tight hallways and cramped apartments for residents of the station providing the necessities for living but not much more than that. So comfort in this station, like many others around the galaxy, is not an expectation, but mostly a highly priced commodity. Gateway Station also has a number of external docking areas for various spacecraft such as travelling cruisers, trading freighters, frigates and warships. On top of that the station also encompassed basic research facilities, however this was far from the main modules of the station. Maintenance and upkeep of the station's external structure was largely conducted with the help of the station's fleet of service shuttles. The history of Gateway Station is largely uneventful, given but a few notable occurrences there. As stated, the station was constructed in the 2130s and operated at an expanding capacity through the rest of the 22nd century. In 2176, the USS Sulaco was involved in a docking accident with the station. This unfortunate freak occurrence resulted in the deaths of five crew members. Later in the year 2179, after the recovery of warrant officer Ellen Ripley from the drifting Narcissus escape vessel after a 57-year hypersleep, Ripley would be taken to Gateway and placed within the recovery ward of the medical facility to be monitored. Ripley wasn't the only one from the Narcissus that took up temporary residence on Gateway. Jonesy, the Nostromo's crew pet cat, was allowed to stay on station until leaving with Ripley for Earth, even though pets were not allowed on station, an exception was made. Once fully recovering from the unusually long hypersleep, Ripley needed to undergo a round of extensive questioning before a board of executives from the ICC, the ECA, and even the FBI and Whalen Utani regarding the destruction of the USCSS Nostromo, something she had a hand in. Ripley's account of an alien organism being the source of the chaos was met with heavy skepticism. Ultimately, the board didn't file any criminal criminal charges against the prior warrant officer but instead choose to strip her of her flight status. Post 22nd century our data on Gateway Station is limited however all that is currently known is that as of the time of the events surrounding the crash of USM Origa on Earth in 2381 that Gateway was seemingly absent, not even being able to be contacted or warned in advance of the ship's imminent demise. As more information about the station's history becomes available to us, we at the project will be sure keep you all in the know. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, and Jack Fleming Jr. Or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia, and Carl from the War Game Bootcamp. Until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.